into a comfy position. Okay, well done. Hello. So today we're going to be talking about how the Project Hen Haven is going to help our very high needs hens like Ariel. So you might already know a bit about Ariel's story, some of you may even sponsor her, but I'll give you a quick recap just so you know what she's been through. At the moment I'm doing her morning food and water, so after I've let the other girls out and given them some food, me and Ariel sit down and I give her her water, because as you can see, if she, if she takes a sip, her head naturally wants to go to the side and go under, so I just put my hand here so she keeps, keeps her head up. And then we have some food after. So I could be sitting here sometimes between half an hour to an hour, giving her her food, giving her the start to the day that she needs. And I find the longer I spend with her, the better she does for the rest of the day, as far as being able to keep her head up and have some fun outside. So first of all, let me briefly tell you Ariel's story and how she's ended up with us. So in 2015, we were in a battery farm a really disgusting, well they all are, but you know, it had, it was, it was a smaller one, but sometimes the smaller ones have the most disgusting conditions. Um, I guess they're, as businesses, they're not as well run, not that we care about that, but that means that the animals are sometimes even worse off. For example, there might be more dead animals left in the cages, whereas the bigger businesses would probably clean them out most days. So Ariel was one of those hens that I thought had died in the cage. There were a lot of dead girls there. So I stopped and I looked at her and we were doing some filming that day. So I just stood and watched her and just kind of took a moment to think of everything she'd been through in her, in that tragic life. But then I called someone else over because her sides moved ever so slightly. So, oh my goodness, she's alive. So even if she doesn't survive, we have to get her out. Because one thing that I try and instill in all members of my rescue team is that even if you're not there to rescue, and even if there's 100,000 animals in the shed, if you've taken the time to film or to hold someone or to look at someone in the eye, who's even if they're dying, it's your duty to take that animal. It may not be possible in some cases, like with a sow in a, in a piggery or a cow in a feedlot, but when you can, when, when they're a chicken, then you take them and you make it work, um, even if you don't have a home lined up for them. And that's what we did with Ariel. So I had the rescuer carry her the whole way. She didn't go in a pet carrier because her head would go all the way under her body. Yeah, she's gonna have a bit of a stretch, are you? Hey? And her eyes were closed. When I got home, I did something a bit like this, but with a syringe, I dripped some water onto her beak. And it wasn't that day, but the next that she opened one eye. Sorry, just need to cough. <coughs> <coughs> oh dear. <clears throat> this happens sometimes because we've got the birds in the house. You can see Raphael actually. He's there. Do, do. <laughs> And um, we've got Robin the pigeon as well. Sometimes the dust gets in my throat. In the new Project Hen Haven, they will have a beautiful outside flight aviary as well. So Ariel required some really intense nursing and we had the community, we were living on the central coast at the time, and we had some of the community come together from the vegan community and volunteer to help syringe feed her and give her water by hand or just sit in the garden and cuddle her. Um, we had a few people uh, who, who helped us and who I'm still in contact with to this day who have given her amazing love in the beginning stages and shown her what she had to live for, took her outside and it's like, it's not just a battery cage, if you get better, you've got all of this to live for. So that continued and after you know a month or so, she actually was able to stand up and she began to walk in a battery cage sized circle. So it was as if she was still in the battery cage. But eventually that circle got bigger and bigger until she could walk in a line and she'd even run and jump. Um, so she, she made huge improvements. But she was left with some brain damage. And you can see some signs of it here, how her head tilts when she's just had a drink like that. So she needs some help to keep her head up. And she does really badly in the rain, and if she's 
stressed, like if there's lots of new people, she'll go back to walking in circles or get her head stuck under. So we have to be really, um, really careful with her and really monitor her well. It was, she'd actually come shortly after Maddie. So Maddie sadly passed away this year, but she was another one of our very high needs hens who would need a similar enclosure set up to Ariel and they became great friends. Now Ariel has another friend called Matilda, who's also one of our high needs girls. Matilda is a little silky who was rescued from a neglect situation where live chickens were being fed to chained dogs. And Matilda is blind. She's completely, I think she might be able to see some shadows and some light, but she's mostly blind. And what's happened is that Ariel has, it acts a bit like a seeing eye hen in that she helps her find out where to go and um, guides her around and they snuggle together at, in the evening. But at night, Ariel sleeps in her own carrier because she she, ooh, she lies down on it. She has like a thick yoga mat or a, or a memory foam bath mat on the bottom of her carrier so that she can lie down. She lies with her head down, not tucked behind her like a uh, hen may do usually. So that's Ariel's story and now it's five years later and we still give her food and water by hand. She can eat and drink on her own but she doesn't get enough. I'm just going to switch to her food now because see she's giving me that look like I've had enough water now can we move on to the next? So, she, so this is her food she has a seed mix. She does a bit better with food <clears throat> in that I don't have to put my hand right there to hold her head up but she doesn't do as well with food if it's if it's wet. Um, like a, a watermelon, for example, she might struggle with a bit, even though she'd really like to eat it. <clears throat> I've really got a frog in my throat today. So probably because it's the morning, I shouldn't try making videos first thing in the morning. <laughs> uh, she loves the corn bits on the top, so she's trying to pick them out. That's why she's getting her head around. So Project Hen Haven is, is a chance for us to give the animals, the, the highest needs animals, the enclosures that they deserve and that they need. So at the moment in our rented house and our garden, we have constructed Ariel and Matilda their own enclosure because they would get picked on by the other girls um, and because Matilda needs to know her space really well and also to give them extra protection from cats or foxes. Well, we don't really have foxes in this area, but hawks. Um, so they've got that extra protection there and also they don't have to compete with the other girls for the food and water so that will definitely continue in the project hen haven but the thing is <clears throat> the things that we would do better firstly she doesn't do brilliantly on hills and we've got a really hilly garden so if we did get a property which was hilly we would make sure we chose a flatter bit for her and matilda for their enclosure so that they wouldn't have that to battle with Whereas for the other hens, we'd want to make it as much as, of a jungle as possible. With Ariel and Matilda, we want to give them things to explore, but we want to make sure that they're not obstacles. We need to make sure it's nothing that Ariel could get tangled up in. Like if there were branches on the ground, um, roots and things like that that she could get stuck in. It needs to be fairly clear for her while still providing shade and things of interest, dust bathing areas. The other thing that Ariel and Matilda really struggle with is the rain. If it's rainy, I have to bring her inside, but the trouble is she doesn't do well inside just on the floor. She loves to having cuddles, but she doesn't do well just on the floor. She kind of goes back to that circular thing. And she doesn't, like, if you put her in a small area, she'll kind of, she won't be able to stand up. And if you put her, like, there's something about the walls, I think it throws her off. So rain is super hard here because all I've done is I've put tarps up because everything we construct has to be able to be taken down when we leave. So it, it can't be the proper permanent structures that we want. We need it to be properly waterproof aerial areas for aerial where she can be in the rain. So that if we're out, which I try not to be in the Rishona Preen now, but <laughs> we try not to leave her if it's raining but that she would be safe and that she would be comfortable in the rain because it's so worrying that she might get caught in the rain. Um, so that for her, that could be deadly. So having a place where we could create that space for her that's still really interesting would be amazing. 
she's still going to be one of the hens that will still come inside at night. She will still come in like this for her food and water because that's just her special needs. That's what she needs, isn't it, darling? But we'd also talk to the vet and find out, is there anything else we can do for her in her life in a new enclosure to make her more comfortable? Like, for example, we have an implant for her so she doesn't have to lay eggs. For her laying eggs, when she got, she didn't lay them at first because her body was just so, in such a terrible condition. It seemed like she had been deprived of water and that I think she'd had a head trauma that had then stopped her being able to get to the food and water. So she was also suffering dehydration. And what is it? I completely forgot what I was going to say. So anyway, she'll still come in and have her food and water with us. But what we want to provide her is a space which is so much easier for her to walk around. And she loves her treats. She loves things. I mean, she might need a bit of help to eat them. But if you can imagine a space in the enclosure with a bench where we could sit and volunteers could sit and um, give her her food and water on a regular basis. She's actually... She's not too bad in the heat. She really quite enjoys the hot weather. So for Ariel, that won't be as much of a concern. And we'll have to make sure, despite the good weather proofing, that there is oh, areas where the sun can get through and she can have a really nice sunbathe and a dust bathe. You can see how badly she was de-beaked as a chick. Hey, you've still got that short beak. The other thing that Ariel needs is, you can see, well, I don't know if you can see, but her eyes are quite um, deep set. So her eyelids, especially because if her head goes on the ground, she can get dirt around her eyes. So a lot of mornings we bathe her eyes just to make sure they're open and that they're comfortable. Um, and we'd make sure that that continued, obviously, in the Project Henhaven. We've had lots of girls over the years. Uh, Maddie was also very high needs, but she used to do this. And then she'd preen my arm after we'd finished um, her food and water. So, but just to give us the ability to take in these girls and give them the care that they need, give them a separate area and, and meet their requirements so that they're not in a difficult position in the rain and so that they can get the vet care they need. In an ideal world, if we're going to put massive dreams out there, then of course we have a vet clinic on site and always have vets a vet available. Obviously that's a very far off dream but it's something that um like for example soy dogs the street dog organization in thailand they have vets on site can you imagine how amazing that would be to come back from a rescue and to immediately have the vet care just available for the girls um so there's so much that we'll be able to do for ariel what are you doing what are you looking at now there's another bit of corn there look hey oh big shake <laughs> she's absolutely beautiful she deserves the best and one thing that's really hard for her and Matilda and other high needs hens is moving so if we, when we move from this house next year as we always have to with rentals because they either you know they're not going to knock this one down but when they sell um, all the animals have to move which yes it means we have to take down all their enclosures and build a new ones, which is an adjustment especially for a, a hen with special needs like Ariel or especially if they've you know, got vision impairment like Matilda. It's a huge deal getting used to somewhere new, especially as they age. And if we get this project Henhaven, we can make this the very last time they have to adjust. And Ariel's lived since she came to us in Etalong. So she's lived in Etalong, um, Engadine. Where else have you lived? Putney, Mount Cola. Is that all of the places? So Ariel's lived at four, will be five, uh, just in the time that she's been with us, and that's a lot of adjustments. So we want to make one place, just one, we've got to move either way, whether it's to a rental or a permanent space. So we want to make sure we move to a permanent space where these girls can adjust for the very last time, where we can share their story, where on the outside of Ariel's enclosure, we've got all the information about her, and Matilda and any other special needs hens that have joined them and we also show where she came from you know that awful battery cage or a similar one to show the size of where she was living and what she was going through 
and it will just be a, it, will, it will just be the most wonderful thing to give her a permanent home that she deserves. Won't it, sweetheart? If you want to help, you can donate to our Chuffer campaign, and you can actually choose a perk to sponsor Ariel. If you donate eighty dollars, you can choose to sponsor Ariel, and that money goes towards helping her as well. So, because she has her implants every about every eight months to stop her laying eggs, and um, yeah, so you can choose that, or you get your wall, your name on the wall of Chuck Champions. You can go to chuff.org slash project slash henhaven, or you can donate at henrescue.org slash donate, and every bit helps. We're getting nearer to our target, and we really want to make it happen for these beautiful girls like Ariel. So I'm going to go, I think she's finished now, so I'll offer her some more water, and then I'm going to go and take her outside so she can enjoy the rest of her day. So I will see you in tomorrow's video. See ya. You're gorgeous. Oh, well done. Well done, Becky. We love you. Don't we? We love you so much. You're beautiful. Yes, you are. Nah. She's closing her eyes and making